Hi friends, it's Pastor Peter Guy here again. I'd like to talk to you today about God's amazing gift of salvation, particularly as it comes to us in baptism. You know, the last words of Jesus as recorded in Matthew's Gospel. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe what I have commanded you and I am with you always. That was Jesus commission to his disciples. I'm going back to heaven, but you go and preach the gospel. Make disciples, followers of me, of all the nations of the world. How do we do that? Baptize them in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teach them the truths of the Christian faith. Teach them to appreciate what they have received in baptism. Mark finishes his gospel in a similar way. He says, preach the gospel to all creation. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. On the day of Pentecost, Peter gets up in front of a large crowd and he says to them, this Jesus Christ is the Messiah whom you guys screamed out to be crucified only 50 days or so in the past. But he was the saviour of the world, your saviour, the saviour of all people. What shall we do? The people said to Peter. Peter said, repent, be sorry for what took place and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise of God is for you and for your children and for all who are far away, whom God will call into his kingdom. Friends, baptism is a means of salvation. Baptism is a means of God giving his saving grace. It is for you, for your children, for all who are far away whom our Lord God will call. In 1 Peter, Peter again says, baptism now saves you because, as Peter says, it links us with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The life that Jesus took back three days after his death upon the cross is available to all people through God's saving grace in baptism. Baptism, or salvation rather, isn't what we do. How do we obtain eternal life? It's not what we do. It's not a decision that we make. It's not a prayer that we pray. It is all gift of God. By grace you have been saved by God. Not through works, lest no one should boast. It's all God's saving gift. We're saved by the grace of God. Baptism saves you. How can this be? A splash of water and a few words? How can salvation come about through such a simplistic, naive means of just a bit of water splashed on someone's head or going down into the water and the word of God pronounced over that person and a life is changed? Someone is taken from hell to the kingdom of heaven? That seems too simplistic. Well, in 2 Kings, it tells us a story about a Syrian commander named Naaman. Naaman was a great uh, military commander, but he also had one problem. He had leprosy. He had, though, a small Jewish slave girl who told Naaman about a prophet there in Israel named Elisha. And she suggested that her master go to Israel and seek out this prophet because she was convinced that this prophet Elisha could help her master Naaman. Well, Naaman went to Israel and he found Elisha. And Elisha simply sent his servant to the door, tell Naaman to go to the river Jordan and bathe seven times and he'll be healed. Well, when Naaman heard that, he was quite indignant. He was annoyed. I thought the prophet would have come out to speak to me and wave his hands in the air and perform some great ritual. But no, he simply says, go and wash in the river Jordan. Haven't we got better rivers in Syria? Why do I come here to hear such insulting words from this man? A servant said to Naaman, well, if the prophet told you to do something really hard, you would have done it, wouldn't you? Yes, Naaman said. Well, all he wants you to do is go and wash in the Jordan River. Well, Naaman did that. He washed seven times and his leprosy was cleansed. Something so simple can have such profound effects. And so it is with baptism. What seems so simple in baptism, so naive, brings us great blessing. Why is that? Well, friends, it's because God so loved the world. God wants no one to perish. He wants his salvation to be simple, to be attainable for all people. God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever 
has a faith, a belief, a trust in Jesus will not perish, but instead have eternal life. Well, that eternal life is available in baptism. What does baptism give? Well, as we heard Peter say, baptism conveys the forgiveness of our sins, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings saving faith, trust in God that leads to eternal life. Baptism brings us adoption into the family of God. Baptism is the entry point into the church of God. And with baptism, we receive spiritual gifts to be used in the church of God, in the body of Christ for building up other believers. All of that and more is God's gift in baptism. In baptism, a life is changed. We have been born again of water and the spirit. As Jesus said to a Pharisee named Nicodemus, hinting at the day of Pentecost, when Peter would get up and say, be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, applying water, and you'll receive this gift of the Holy Spirit, bringing eternal life and salvation. As simple as it may seem, baptism is life-giving. What now? What now if you've been baptized? Well, believe and be baptized and you will be saved, said Mark. Belief is an ongoing thing. Baptism happens once, but belief is something we need to keep clinging to. Be faithful unto death for the crown of life says our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep on believing. Keep on hanging in there. Don't give up. Go the journey of life with Jesus Christ because the reward is there for those who consist, persist with Jesus Christ. Those who don't give up. That's the encouragement because many people who have been baptized have given up and walked away from this saving blessing of God. The book of Hebrews in the New Testament warns us if we deliberately sin after we receive the grace of God, there's no sacrifice then for the forgiveness of sins. There's no sacrifice to forgive our sins if we don't want forgiveness of sins. And that's what happens if we deliberately sin and turn away from God. Hebrews also says to us, if we've tasted the heavenly gift and shared in the Holy Spirit and fall away, if we've been enlightened by the truth of the gospel, how can that truth be restored if we've heard it, walked away from it? so hard to have that back again. Friends, if you've been baptized, you have been born again. Your life is no longer what it was before. You are a changed person. You're a child of God and an heir of salvation. You are destined for eternal life because by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourself. It is gift of God. What do we do? Celebrate, enjoy who you are as a child of God. Be what you are. You are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared in advance for you to do. Let us walk in those good works of God and be that man, that woman, that child of God that our baptism has made of us. Peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you.